Proverbs chapter 3, some very familiar verses, but uh, maybe a little bit different uh, twist here on those verses as we're going to talk about trusting the Lord uh, today. Proverbs chapter number 3, and again, we're glad that uh, you're out here on this. Started off rainy. When we left the house this morning, it was pouring down, and uh, poured down all the way here, and um, but then it, it kind of slacked off. Was it raining when uh, some of y'all come in for church, uh, Sunday school, church? So, so anyway, it's kind of slacked off a little bit. Thank the Lord for it. Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to play a what-if game before we read. Okay? Let's play a what-if game here before we uh, read our scripture. What if you, and if you have this, you can let me know afterwards, uh, but uh, let's just kind of pretend, okay? Uh, this first one's pretend, I guess. Uh, if you had a million dollars a day that you needed somebody to be in charge of for you, who would you choose? Okay, think about that for a moment. If you had a million dollars that you needed someone to be in charge of for you for a few months, who would you choose to be in charge of your money? What if for some unforeseen reason, and we certainly hope this does not happen, but what if for some unforeseen reason you are unable to raise your children? You are unable to raise your children. Who would you want that responsibility to go to? Who would you uh, want to have your kids? Think about that for a moment. And then what if you needed to tell someone your deepest, darkest secrets? You just needed to get something off your mind, off your heart. Who would you tell that to? Uh, who, who would you go to and tell that to? Would it be uh, Dr. Phil? Jerry Springer? Lord forbid, huh? By the way, if, if uh, Dana uh, ever calls Jerry Springer and says uh, that she wants me to appear on that show with her, I'm going to decline, all right? Uh, uh, so, uh, anyhow, who in the world would you get to do all of those things? Well, I, I don't know who you would get, but I will, I will tell you this much. Uh, with your money, with your kids, with your deepest, darkest secrets, you would get somebody that you trusted completely. Somebody that you trusted completely. And, and that's really what the message is all about here tonight, or t this morning, is trust, trust. You know, one of the greatest concerns of any human being is, whom can I trust? Who is trustworthy that's in my life? And one of the greatest disappointments of life is to find that you have trusted someone and your trust has been misplaced. That is a very sad, sad situation. And, and we've all been there in one form or another where we have trusted in someone or something and, our, and we found out later on that our trust has been misplaced. You know, everything we do just about is, is, uh, involves trust. Almost everything we do involves trust. When you're out here on the road and you're on a two-lane road, let's say, you trust those other people to stay on their side of the road while you stay on your side of the road, right? You trust red lights. You trust that people, when, it, when it's red uh, on their side and green on your side, you trust that they've stopped. Uh, our, our lives are, are absolutely full of trust. Many of you will go to work tomorrow, and you're going to trust your employer that you're going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and that they're going to pay you for working on Friday for working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, you probably don't get paid every day. Uh, uh, and, and so you trust your employer. So trust is involved in every, th every aspect of our life. You know, we are born with an innate uh, uh, a need and desire to trust. We want to trust other people. And I'll tell you who knows, who knows that. Politicians know it. Advertising agencies know it that there are things you want to trust in. And I'll tell you who else knows it. Con men know it. Scammers know it. 
that there's, there's people out there that uh, know that you want to trust what somebody says and, and, and help them out or give to them. But I'll tell you somebody else who knows it, God knows it. God knows it. And so the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, trust is a big part of our lives, a major part of our lives, and, and we're, we need to trust in something. So the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That is what God wants from all of us this morning. He wants our trust. He wants us not only to believe in him, but to give him all of our hearts, the very core of our being. He wants us to trust in him with all of our heart. It's, it's almost like if we could take our heart out this morning and, and place it in someone's hands, whose hands would you place it in? Well, it would be the one that you trust the most, that would take the best care of it. And let me tell you who that would be. That would be God himself. We would take our heart out and place it in his hands. And that's what he asked us to do this morning, to trust in him with all of our hearts. You know, little kids, they have a tendency to trust about anything, don't they? They have a tendency to trust about it. That's why from very early on, what do we teach our kids? Do not talk to strangers. Somebody comes in and offers them a piece of candy or whatever. Uh, uh, well, we don't want that in their life. They're trusting. Uh, they, they trust in mom and dad. They, they trust in other people. They trust in their teachers and, and, and those that are around them, their friends. <coughs> it's, 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 it's made up in them. And so God wants us to be like little children and trust in Him with all of our heart. You know, it's a whole lot easier for a child to trust in the Lord sometimes than it is for an adult to trust in the Lord. That's why it's so much better to come to the Lord at an early, early age. Well, today, you're going to be given an opportunity. If you've already trusted in Christ as your Savior, then you're going to be given an opportunity today to be reminded that we need to trust in Him with every aspect of our life. But if you've not received Christ as your Savior today, then today is the day that you should give Him your heart. Come now, the Bible says. Don't put it off. We need to trust in Him. So what does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to trust God? Well, I think that's a good question. And this, these verses here have some thoughts on that today that I want to share. Number one, Trusting God means you rely more on the unseen than the seen. You rely more on the unseen than the seen. And that is very, very, very difficult. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to participate here, okay, in the service. All right, are you ready for this? I want everybody to get your wallet out or get your purse out and see if you have a dollar bill, a $5 bill, a $100 bill, a $500 bill, whatever you have. Everybody get a dollar bill out if you have it. Uh, everybody, everybody, everybody. Get a dollar bill out if you have it. Let me see if I have one. All I have is a, a wallet full of $100 bills here. Let's see. Uh, just a joke, just a little joke. All right, I, I don't have a one, but I do have a five. Hallelujah. Boy, amazing. But I do. All right. Everybody got a dollar bill? I'm gonna keep, I'll give you just another second, okay, where you can work on it. Yeah, help the kids out if you, if you have something, all right? Okay. All right. Everybody got a dollar? Dollar bill? Five dollar bill? Ten dollar bill? Twenty dollar bill? Man, we need to probably take up another offering here. <laughs> sounds, that sounds good. Might have to go get the offering plate back in here. Okay. On your dollar bill in one of these here places, I'm looking on this one. It must not be on the front. It must be on the back. It's on the back of the $5 bill. I don't know if it's on the back of yours, but there's, there's a, a, a phrase with four words in it. And it says, it starts with the word in. So what does yours say? In God we trust. Is that on your money? Okay, that's on, that's on, my, that's on this bill right here. Okay, now I want you to hold your bill up and just kind of wave it around for a minute. Hold your bill up. Okay, all right, just kind of wave it around. All right, I see, I see a bunch of them. All right, now look around. Do y'all see other dollar bills? Keep, keep waving. Y'all see other dollar bills? Okay, y'all see other dollar bills? Okay, see those waving? Okay, 
Okay, they got some change. Let me, I might have to give them this five and, and maybe something else. I don't know. But, uh, uh, all right, wave. All right, what do y'all see? Y'all see dollar bills, right? Now, I'll tell you something you don't see in here. You don't see God, in essence, literally, I'm talking about, okay? We know that God's with us, but you don't see God. And I'll tell you this much. You know what more people trust in? They trust in this than they do God. You know why? Because this is seen and God is unseen. Now, you can put your money away, or you can give it to the Simpsons, one or the other, <laughs> uh, 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 and help them out. And there was a couple others that didn't have anything. Maybe we should have given y'all something, too. Y'all will be prepared next time, okay? Uh, uh, but they probably got a credit card or something, maybe, or a debit card. Who knows? Uh, uh, okay, so we trust in the seen more than we do the unseen, but to trust in the Lord means that we trust in the unseen more than we do the seen. We want to trust our money more than we want to trust God. We want to, we want to trust our bank accounts more than we want to trust God. And so we just kind of hold on to everything. Uh, we saw a sign earlier that says, you know, some people give God the credit, but they don't give Him the cash. Well, that's what God's looking for in our lives, though, to trust Him with all of our heart. And it means trusting the unseen more than it does the seen. I believe right now, if you did not have a dollar bill this morning, and maybe you don't have a dollar bill to your name, I still believe you do right by God. You can still trust God with all of your heart and that God will meet your needs. Secondly, trusting God means total commitment. Total commitment. Y'all probably heard this story before, but I'll remind you. There was a chicken and a pig who were walking down the road together. A chicken and a pig walking down the road together. They saw a sign in front of a building that said, Annual Fundraiser, Ham and Egg Breakfast. The chicken said to the pig, hey, that's right up our alley. Why don't we go in and help out? Well, the pig said, that's easy for you to say. For you, it's just a contribution. For me, we're talking total commitment. <laughs> and that's what trusting in the Lord with all of our heart means, total commitment. Anybody here ever bungee jumped? Got one, two, three. Two crazy people in here, huh? All right, bungee jump. Y'all know what bungee jumping is, right? They, they tie this uh, uh, bungee cord to the side of a bridge somewhere or something, and they attach you to the end of it and then tell you to jump. And then it takes you right down to almost right on the, the top of the river down here uh, and then brings you back up. Well, I don't know about y'all, I've never done it, and I will not do it. I don't even get on the giant swing at the wire, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I've got better sense than that. But the, the um, <laughs> that's pro pro probably need to retract that statement. But, uh, you know, that just, that seems like, that's, that's, man, that's too much more trust than what I want to do. To some little cord. Now, listen to this. You can watch bungee jumping on TV, which I have seen a little bit of that. You can go watch it in person. You can have friends, and we know a couple of people who are bungee jumpers. You can own stock in bungee cord manufacturing companies. You, you can subscribe to Bungee Jumping Digest, if there's such a thing. You can even stand on the side of a bridge, all wired up and ready to go, but you have not trusted in the bungee cord until you jump. I don't know if there's any half-hearted bungee jumpers or not. I mean, you're either all in or all out. Most of us are all out, but there's a few who's all in. And what does it take? It takes a wholehearted, total commitment. And I'm going to tell you right now, trusting God is like bungee jumping. It really is. It, it takes total commitment. There is a point in your life where you decide to jump. And in essence, let God handle the rest. 
You have put your total trust in Him. And I'll tell you this much. God really doesn't ask you just to jump once. He asks you to jump many times. Different places in your life where there comes a time in your life and, and, and you don't know what to do. And, and what does the Lord say? Trust in me. Trust in me. And He says, with all your heart. With all your heart. Total commitment to God. Thirdly, trusting God means you admit that He's wiser than you. That uh, He's a lot smarter than you. He's a lot wiser than you. That your knowledge of things pales in comparison to His. Your understanding of things pales in comparison to His. And, and that's not easy to do because, you know, we humans have a lot of pride, do we not? We like to think maybe we're a little bit smarter than what we are. Well, I can remind you right now, you're not as smart as God. You're not as wise as God. And trusting the Lord with all of our heart means that we admit that He is wiser, He is smarter, He understands things a whole lot better than we do. That, is that not true for parents versus children? We got the Adams getting ready to have a, a, a baby, and not just one baby, but two babies. Here in about, what, two months, two or three months here. She's getting... Miss Kim's getting ready to have about, she's going to have two babies at one time. They call that twins, right? <laughs> and one's a boy and one's a girl. That's pretty neat. Now, uh, uh, we, they're getting ready to be parents. And let me tell you something. Uh, a kid's understanding of things versus a parent's understanding of things is two different things. And that's the same way it is with God and us. That's the same way it is with God and us. God's understanding of things is so much better than ours. And so that's why we've got to trust in Him with all of our heart. They were talking about uh, uh, NASA. Somewhere in, uh, at NASA was talking about, if we ever get somebody to Mars, how are we going to get them back? Somebody said, well, it's, it starts with our Father, which aren't in heaven. Uh, hallowed be thy name. You know, trying to figure it out. Because there comes a time where where mankind gets to the edge of their understanding of things and we can't figure it out anymore. And boy, does that not happen in our lives a lot. You just can't quite figure it out. That's why God says, trust in me with all your heart. And he says, lean not onto your own understanding. We try to figure it all out. We think we're so smart. Let me tell you something. God says, don't lean on your own understanding. Lean on mine. You know, we, we got a lot of all to bees in our life, do we not? We got a lot of all to bees in our life. People, people ought, to, ought to be uh, fair with me. People ought to, ought to be nice to me. Uh, uh, I ought not to suffer from a terminal illness. I ought to be financially secure. God ought to say yes to all my prayers. My children or spouse ought to live longer than me. Uh, uh, bad things ought not to happen to me. We have a lot of all things in our life that we, that we uh, look at. But let me tell you something. Some of those things are going to happen to you. So you better be careful about saying ought to be's in my life to God. We watched a movie last night. Maybe some of you did. It was, a, it was based on a true story. It's called The, the Color of Rain. And if you, and if you uh, didn't see it, uh, I'm sure it'll come back on. It's on the Hallmark Channel. And uh, it was a, based on a true story of this uh, man. or this Actually, it was a lady who lost her husband. Uh, he was uh, sick for a couple of years, and then he died. They, 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 were, they live up in Michigan. And then six weeks later, uh, this man lost his wife to an inoperable brain tumor. And their, their, these, these uh, widow and widower, their kids went to the same school, and they ended up meeting and ended up falling in love and, and getting married. And uh, it's the Spain family, S-P-E-H-N. And uh, it, it's a, it was a great story, uh, absolutely great story. That, and and they're, they're, uh, it's, it's a, uh, uh, they're, they're a Christian family, and now there's five of them. They, call them. they basically call themselves the Brady Bunch, you know, the true and living Brady Bunch. Uh, well, one of them had three kids, one of them had two, and now they got five. But at, during the movie, of course, the man talked to the preacher of the church, and buddy, he just, he just reamed that preacher out. He said, why would God give us kids if he knew my wife was going to die?
amongst other questions. And of course, the preacher don't have an answer for that. I don't have an answer for that. Nobody's got an answer for that. But I do know this, that we're supposed to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. And now they have a very happy home, and their story is, is now being broadcast, and, and their story is, is also making people think and say, hey, you know, God can work all things out for our good. Somehow, some way. It's not what we want. But sometimes, God, things happen in our lives and we've just got to trust in Him. There was a football player named Buck Buchanan who played for the Kansas City Chiefs a number of years ago. And after he uh, got out of football, while still a relatively young man, he died of cancer. Before he died, however, he uh, had done an interview with a radio station there in Kansas City. And the interviewer asked him if he ever wondered, why me? And Buck Buchanan said, I used to think that until I started going for treatments and I met a seven-year-old girl with the same illness I had. He said, that shook me up so much that I began to wonder, why not me? Why not me? Do I have all the answers? Oh, not hardly. Do you have all the answers? Oh, not hardly. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. Number four says, in all your ways acknowledge Him. Trusting God means that you're going to live life His way. That you're going to live life His way. That's not always easy. It's not always easy. See, because God's way is many times 180 degrees opposite of conventional human wisdom. You know what God says uh, about our enemies? He says we ought to love them. You know what uh, mankind says? Hate them. When you've suffered hurts, the human's way is to fight back. God's way is to turn the other cheek. You know, uh, when it comes to money and, and material things, you know what the human being says? Get as many and much as you can. You know what God says? It's better to give than to receive. When it comes to greatness, mankind says, well, you get it by, by winning over others. God says you get it by serving others. When it comes to honesty, you know what man says? As long as it doesn't cost you. God says, even when it does cost you. When it comes to who matters in life, Human beings say, well, the beautiful people. God says, whoever and whosoever will may come. I'm going to tell you, you want to live life God's way? You're going to swim upstream in this world. You're going to swim upstream. I'm going to tell you, you, just, you read the paper and you read the news and you're just absolutely sickened and shocked. I don't know the whole story, but uh, uh, this past week in Vidalia, Georgia, Toombs County, the school teacher who just got out of school, maybe you heard the story, 20-something years old, recently married. A guy who got out of jail in January, stabbed her to death. Left her on, on the side of a road up there in Toombs County. It's amazing. I read uh, uh, where a 17-year-old boy in Statesboro, Georgia, got an 11-year-old girl pregnant. And we're, we're just sickened and, and shocked and saddened by all of the things going on. But then, to just live life, you know, you, you've got to be uh, 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 different. Uh, uh, and and you, if you want to live it God's way, you're going to have to swim upstream because the whole world is just going downstream. And you've got to be tough. It takes a man's man and a woman's woman to live for God, I'm telling you. To be different. The party scene. The drinking scene. The, the materialistic scene. 
You know, what can we accumulate? What can we acquire? But trusting God means that you're going to live His way. To trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways acknowledge Him. And then He's going to direct my path. Which leads me to number five. Just relax and go with the flow. And sometimes that's tough because we want to control everything, do we not? We want to control everything. Uh, we want to be in charge of everything. Well, when God uh, uh, saves us, he begin, he, we just start a new trip with Him. A, a trip to an eternal destination. The road's not always easy. It's not always smooth. But we can relax and know that whatever happens to us, God's behind all of it. He's the one that's clearing the path for us. We had a, a sign out there a couple weeks ago that said something about when, when God uh, uh, sends us on stony paths, He's going to give us strong shoes to go on those stony paths. And there are going to be stony paths in our life. But God will give us those strong shoes. Psalm 31, 14 and 15 says, But I trusted in Thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in Thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. I trusted in Thee. Trusting in God means relying more on the unseen than the seen. It means total commitment. It means admitting that He's wiser than we are. It means living life His way. Even though that's tough, it means relaxing and, and just going with the flow. You know, uh, again, things happen, bad things happen to us, and man, we just have a nervous breakdown. When God says, I just want you to trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. I'll direct your path. That even in those bad things, God's directing us, changing us. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2, if you would. I want to show you a verse. 1 Peter chapter number 2. <coughs> 1 Peter chapter number 2. Verse number 6. Would you look at this with me? Wherefore also it is contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. And this is what I want you to see, this last phrase of this verse. And he that believeth on him, or we could say he that trusteth in him, shall not be confounded. Another word for confounded there is the word disappointed. In other words, those that trust in the Lord with all their heart, lean not unto their own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge Him, their paths are directed, they will not be disappointed. They will not be confounded. The Bible is full of stories, and, and life is full of stories of people who just trusted in the Lord with all their heart. And God led them, led them, you know what the real question is here this morning? Is not, can I trust God, but will I trust God? That's really what the question is. We, in the adult Sunday school class, we was talking today about uh, there's enough Christians, there's enough Christianity in this world for people to know enough about it to turn to Christ, but they choose willingly to blind themselves to the gospel. They choose willingly to blind themselves to the gospel. There's enough of you who have a testimony for Christ in your neighborhood, on your job, uh, amongst your family, amongst your friends, uh, uh, where, when you go to the store, when you go out to eat and bow and pray. There's enough of you to have a testimony right now that other people uh, uh, would come to know Christ. But let me tell you something. They have chosen to willingly reject. Willingly reject. The question is not, can I trust God, but will I trust God? Will I trust God? That's the question you need to meditate on and you need to think about. See, we've done the investigation. We know that God is trustworthy. We know that God is omnipotent and, and, and almighty and able. So the question is today, not can I trust God, but will I trust God?
Let me tell you this last story, and then I'll be done. Back a hundred years ago or so, there was a European wrestling champion named Yusuf the Terrible Turk. Some of y'all may remember him, I don't know. Yeah, Bill might. He challenged the American champ, Strangler Lewis. Well, that's a good name for a wrestler, isn't it? Strangler Lewis. And he won. This Yusef the Terrible Turk beat Strangler Lewis. The Turk collected his prize of $5,000 in U.S. gold. In gold. He crammed it into the money belt which he wore around his waist. And nobody was going to mess with him, of course. And he set sail back to Europe. Many miles at sea, the ship began to sink, and Yusef went over the side with his belt full of gold still attached. Before the lifeboats could reach him, the Turk and his treasure plunged to the bottom of the Atlantic, never to be seen again. Now, can you imagine the thoughts going through his mind? as he tried harder and harder to stay afloat. I guarantee you, a voice said, cut the belt loose and live. And another voice said, but if I do that, then I'll have lost everything. Another voice said, but everything is nothing if you're dead. Another voice said, well, maybe I can hang on long enough until the light lifeboats get here. The longer he waited and waited and waited, make that decision the harder it got to let go of the money and reach for life you know that's what a lot of people do they're not trusting in God and so they say well maybe tomorrow maybe the next day they've not given God their life maybe tomorrow maybe the next day when the Lord's saying come to me trust me Give me your heart. Trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. The Bible says, he shall direct thy paths. Don't wait. Today's the day of salvation. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.